Hello guys, good morning. I had all intentions of putting makeup on today and putting on a cute outfit, but it's just so cold. So all I want to live in is jumpers and trackies, but I need to go out today to my PO box to get some stuff. And we also need some stuff from the shops, but I thought I would jump on and do my little influencer chat segment. I feel like this is going to be where I do it from now on, my hair, like I air dried it last night and it's all like frizzy when I don't touch it. So I've just put it up like this, otherwise it would look tragic. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna open up the questions that you guys sent in when I uploaded my video last. Okay, this one's a good one. How did Peter react when you first told him what you did for a career and does he mind you getting sent stuff all the time. He must be proud though. Um, so I actually didn't even tell him what I did or what my job was at the time that I met him in Europe. Like I literally, I think I just said I was a makeup artist. Like I was at the time I was doing makeup, but I never really told him about my social media side of things. Like, I don't know. I think I was just like a bit scared that he'd be like, oh fuck. Like I don't want to be involved in that. Um, so I didn't tell him and then I'm pretty sure he asked me for my username one time and I was like, fuck, do I give him my personal account? Because I've got a personal account that I used to use. I don't really use it as often. It's just Jazz Hand XO, but yeah, I've just always kind of had that account for like my friends and following my friends and family. Um, so I was like, shit, do I like tell him about it? Like surely he's just going to find out. Like... So I told him, he was like, what the hell? And I was like, yeah, kind of, um, that's kind of my job, like part of my job. But he was like completely fine with it. He thought it was really cool. Um, but yeah, I didn't tell him when I first met him. I probably told him, I don't know. He didn't really ask for what my Instagram was like early on. He didn't really like show signs of like, oh my God, like what have I got myself into? Because I guess like, when you first tell someone, cause he wasn't really into social media. He only just downloaded Instagram, like pretty much for the trip. Like he had like hardly any photos. He did have some from Japan when he went, but he was like hardly using Instagram. So he probably like didn't really know back then, but now obviously he's learned so much about how Instagram works and he finds it really interesting. And he gets a bit annoyed because we have to go to the, like the local, tip or like place where you um have to dispose your cardboard because our recycling bin isn't big enough for all of the um packages that i get weekly but other than that like he's super supportive and yeah he hasn't really like the only like thing he's complained about is me being on my phone all the time so that's what i touched on yesterday about having like me time and you know switching off like around dinner time just to like you know, focus all my attention on him for the rest of the night. So I do want to really work on that because yeah, I do find myself being on my phone a lot. Even if I'm like not working, I'm just like on my phone, like looking at other stuff, getting inspiration, you know, stalking people, all of that jazz. So yeah, he was super supportive and um, yeah, he didn't mind when I told him. What's the weirdest product you've been asked to promote and along those lines, what's the products you see other influence promoting and you just shake your head at. Okay, so the weirdest and like the most random and probably one of the most high paying like opportunities that I've gotten was shoe soles. Like what you put in your runners to give you some like support on your heels. And I was like, and they were like asking for a lot, like a couple thousand dollars. And I was like, what the actual fuck? Like, I I have no, like, why would I even post about that? Like, imagine me on my stories, not even, like, using shoe soles or, like, anything like that. And then being like, oh, yeah, these are amazing. Like, I use them all the time for support. Um, yeah, it's just really random. Like, I guess if I did actually use them, different story. But I'm saying I'd never used shoe soles or anything like that. So I guess, like... If they did approach an influencer and they did wear shoe soles or were interested in that sort of thing, then yeah, why not? 
but I personally don't use shoe soles or like wouldn't feel like it was right for me to just jump on my makeup account and start talking about shoe soles. Anyways, they, yeah, their price was like really high. At the time, I don't think I had, I think I had like 200 or 300 K on Instagram. It was quite a while ago, but like, obviously it did cross my mind. I was like, that is a lot of money. But then I'm like, do I really want to promote something that I know deep down I will, I don't believe in using, like I don't actually use the product. So why would I go on and start raving about something? Um, but yeah, as I said before, fair enough if, you know, whoever's promoting that sort of stuff, if they actually use it, sure. But I just didn't use it. And I just thought it was funny, like shoe soles on a beauty account. Like honestly, like maybe if I was like more of a lifestyle based account, um, but yeah, that was just really bizarre and like, I just can't believe how much they were offering for something like that. So yeah, that would probably have to be the weirdest. Actually, another thing that was weird that was quite recent actually was, I was actually a little bit interested though, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, do I really need that? But like, then I was like, Ooh, what about like the side effects? Anyways, so this company reached out, um, to get a procedure done. It's basically like an injection to stop sweating underneath your arms. So people with like excessive underarm sweating, I wouldn't say I'm excessive. I'm a sweater, but like I wouldn't go to that extreme. Like my deodorant does enough to like prevent myself from like excessive sweating. But yeah, their rates were really high for something like that. And I was like, it'd just be a bit weird. Like, me like promoting that in saying that though i actually turn down more paid work than i do accept paid work so i'm really conscious of ads on my instagram um, and even on youtube if i did post an ad and usually i would say in the description box if it's sponsored or um yeah like i'll clearly say that like it's an ad um or if it's an affiliate link or whatever um so yeah, I would say that every week or so I probably decline at least four or five offers. One of the main companies or type of companies that approach me all the time are skincare companies. And I totally get that. Like, obviously, like I have quite clear skin. I would say I have pretty good skin. Um, so they, you know, companies want to take advantage of that and, you know, they would pay you to promote their stuff. But if I'm like, I wouldn't ever accept that when I know that I'm just not going to use it or like their products may be good. Sure. But I just don't want to be like switching and s switching up my skincare and like my routine just because another brand has come and approached me to pay me. Like I would rather stay sort of loyal and just so you guys aren't confused with what I use. And I kind of like to stick to what I know with skincare and stuff like that. So a lot of skincare companies approach me, um, even some that I've never even heard of. Um, but like, yeah, I'm, I don't blame them for reaching out, but for me, I would personally rather just like stick with one company that I really genuinely love and obviously works. And even if they don't always have like paid work or whatever, or if they've paid me once, um, I would just rather, you know, promote that sort of brand because I actually use it rather than promoting all these different like skincare brands um, just because I'm getting paid all the time to promote. Like it's just a bit confusing. Um, so yeah, skincare brands like to take advantage of me, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, they're probably like the weirdest opportunities that I've gotten so far like there's probably like a few weird ones like a few like dodgy websites that i would get um inquiries from and i'm just like that website looks so dodge like i don't know like there's just a few like really weird ones but nothing like out of the ordinary i guess and what are the products you see other influence promoting that you shake your head oh my fucking god so I haven't really seen many Australian influencers do this, but why do the UK influencers, fitness influencers, promote those fucking ab things that you put on your abs, turn it on, and apparently it's a miracle pad that gives you abs instantly? Like, why are you promoting that? Like, I get it. Like, it's always the people that 
are on reality TV shows that have millions of followers. So the company takes advantage of that, offers them a stupid amount of money, like probably $30,000, not even exaggerating, to jump on the stories or the post and promote something that's just so ridiculous. Like how, just go to the gym. If you want abs, go to the gym, be consistent. Don't fucking buy something that you've seen. I just, I honestly don't get it. Like I've seen that many like reality TV show contestants or celebrities promoting that sort of product. And it's so fucking cringe. Like they do not use that. And if they have abs, they've gone to the gym. They're not using that ab pack. Um, if you guys don't know what I mean, I'm going to post a picture here for your reference. But other than that, there isn't really anything that I like cringe at or I'm just like, mm. yeah, like that's like the main thing that I see a lot. Even guys promoting it as well that already have abs that clearly go to the gym and do ab exercises. And they come on stories and say, this is how I got abs. Like, no, you didn't, mate. How do you pay taxes and stuff? Is it like a, your normal job? I'm assuming it's the same as NZ. When you earn money, you have to declare and pay tax on it. That would be interesting to know. Yes. Like literally we pay tax on absolutely everything, which hurts like a bitch sometimes, but tax is tax. Yep, everyone, all influencers have to pay tax. Is having YouTube channels like running a small business, would you have a business name registered and have to submit BAS every quarter? I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's like an American term, but yeah. So I actually have a tax file number business name under makeup by jazz and that's where all of my paid stuff all of my affiliate income and stuff um all go underneath that name so yeah t technically i am a business makeup by jazz so i have created a company as well that i've just named jazz hand that i can put my businesses under that I still haven't really wrapped my head around how it all works. It's super confusing. So mum has helped me so much. This is a good one and quite a popular question. I've just started on YouTube wondering what lighting you would suggest for a beginner. I'm doing makeup, DIY, organization for now and just using a 4K iPhone to record everything. But my lighting isn't the best. You are amazing. Thank you. Um, okay, so lighting for me, I have spent hundreds of dollars on trying to create the perfect lighting, like studio lighting. Honestly, nothing beats natural lighting. I've placed, I'll actually show you. I've placed my camera right in front of a window with all natural lighting. There's my bins, gross. Um, and I literally prefer to film my makeup tutorials like this. It's very true to color. There's no washing out of um, my skin tone. And sometimes that can happen when you are using artificial lighting and you have to be like really careful and it's really hard to get it right. Um, I've had soft boxes in the past, like they're okay. I recently bought LED lights thinking they'd be amazing because I heard that Nikki Tutorials uses them. But I don't know, like I just feel like natural lighting is always going to be the best, especially if you're doing makeup tutorials because it's true to what colors are actually on your face. Um, and yeah, I just find it really nice. It's like soft. Um, so yeah, if you have like a studio room or even like if you're filming in your room and you have a window set up in front of your window, honestly, it does wonders. You don't need any other lighting. So that would be my advice. Also, sorry, I had to get up and change my battery. Also, the tripod that I got is just from JB Hi-Fi and it has a little um, swirly thing that you can screw on the bottom of your camera, which you can then latch onto the tripod. So that was just really cheap from JB Hi-Fi. I literally had it for years. Okay, I've lost the question box. Last question, how do you go about rates? What's the norm to charge? Do you go by how many followers you have or do you just randomly set a price? This one was like liked by a lot of people. Like I said in my last video, I had no idea that you actually could monetize your Instagram or even if, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Like I honestly just thought influencers got everything for free and they posted about it. I had no idea about monetizing your Instagram. I guess when you first start, like how are you supposed to know? I probably started charging when I had I don't know, maybe under 50K, maybe under 20. But I know back then, you know, brands will always 
ask you first because they don't know what your rates are. So they'll always say, um, what are your rates? Um, instead of them offering something just because obviously they don't know what you're charging. They, I don't know, like brands will always ask you first, but I find that sometimes it's better off asking what their budget is because it could be higher than what you were thinking of asking. So if you're not sure, um, maybe ask them and be like, what's your budget for this? And then if they ask you, then like, I guess you'd have to, you know, set a price. But honestly, like back then it was probably from 50 to a hundred dollars, depending on what sort of like content they want, whether it was an Instagram story. But I think back then it, Instagram stories didn't even exist. So it was all about Instagram posts. It was about like 50 to a hundred dollars a post. I remember. And I was like, Whoa, this is so good. Like, is this how everyone like makes their money? Like I was so confused. And then I guess like, as you grow, you kind of, as I said in my last video, know your worth and what you should be charging. So I guess it does go at the start by your followers. Like, you know, if you had like 200 followers or something like that, a brand probably wouldn't pay you to promote something on your page just because you'd probably get like little reach. Do you know what I mean? So brands would probably only really consider paying you if you had quite a few thousand followers. So for example, 10,000 followers and up. I feel like brands will pay for content um, for micro influencers with 10K and above. Most brands, even if you do maybe even have 50K, they'll always, always say, can we send you this in exchange? They will never offer to pay. They may as well see if you can um, post in exchange. And I would say most people would accept depending on what the product is. Um, and if you truly believe in it and you truly like it, like I have in the past, I have been offered products in exchange for posts that I usually use and love anyway. So I just say yes. I don't know, like with experience, you kind of just gain a knowledge on rates and stuff like that. Obviously, the more you grow, the more engagement you get on your post. Um, and obviously, like a brand will want to work with you again if they went really well. Sometimes a brand would message me and want to do paid work, but they would want to do a test first to see what my audience would react to that sort of certain product like if it would sell if my audience um were interested in that sort of thing so i do get lots of requests to do like a sort of test run first and then if that went well then they'd go on to paid work so yeah it's always good if you do really want to work with a brand like paid always do above and beyond and do lots of free stuff as well i also when I am doing paid work for a brand. So for example, a brand will say, I will pay you this for four stories and a post. I will always go above and beyond that um, to one, impress the client, to like to impress them enough to want to work with me again because they know I'm like either passionate um, and I do want to work with them again. Um, so yeah, I'll always go above and beyond like the set amount that we agreed on. I don't really like putting a like story frame limit. Like it, it just depends on how long it takes me to explain certain things, whether it's in five frames or 15 frames. I don't want to like cut my, you know, ad short and not really make sense and yeah, like it all be all over the place because I've had to cut it into like those three frames that we agreed on, I'll just extend it to six or 10, just ha however long it takes me to um, explain, do a demo. And yeah, so I'll always go above and beyond and brands are so thankful for that. And that's what makes brands want to work with you again. So brands do look for that. Like I personally would be impressed if I paid someone to do um, a five story frame and they've done more than that um, and exceeded the sort of, um, what's it called? We call it like deliverables, but um, exceeded the contract. Like they've just gone above and beyond. So yeah, that's like sort of eye catching for brands and they'll want to work with someone that's like that rather than just sort of doing a half assed um, story or post or whatever. So yeah, I thought that was a little interesting point um, to share with you guys. Always go above and beyond what you are contracted to 
do for a brand well that's just i don't know i guess it's worked for me because i i will never just do the minimum amount i'll always go above and beyond um because one like i'd rather be thorough and show exactly everything rather than like half of that like for example when i worked with rimmel they actually gave me a set amount of frames to do my instagram winged liner tutorial um, and I think it was like five frames and I automatically was like, I'm not doing a winged liner tutorial in five frames. It's going to take me at least 10 frames. Um, so anyways, I did that. I did like probably 10, maybe 10 to even 15 frames. They were really grateful that I did like go the extra mile and go into depth and talk about the product more than I was paid to do just because I genuinely liked the product. So yeah, I just thought that was like an interesting thing to kind of share. So um, yeah, I think that's all the questions for now. I'll leave a pinned comment in this vlog for those that want to ask other questions. But I hope you guys enjoy me like, you know, giving you guys like an insight of how the influencer world works. Because if, like I said, like it's so interesting to me. Even now when I learn new things, I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. Um, but yeah. I, it's actually 11.40. I still haven't had anything to eat because I'll just wait until lunch. We need to go to the post office and get a few things from the shops. I need to get some stuff from Big W. Also, so what I did was I placed an order through Vistaprint, which is a, um, like a business marketing website where you can get like business cards made. You can like personalize business cards. Um, like thank you card, you can get so many things like mugs. I even personalized a mug. Um, so yeah, Vistaprint is amazing and it's really, really affordable. So I was thinking of doing like obviously like a bulk order with another company, which obviously is cheaper. So the more that you order, the cheaper it'll cost per item. So I'm thinking of doing like a thousand pieces because it'll last me forever and it'll be cheaper for me in the long run. So I ordered a bunch of my thank you cards. I think I just ordered either 25 or 50 and it was around 10 or $11, $15. I don't know. It was really cheap, but I just wanted to see in the flesh what the card would look like um, in the style that I wanted. I wanted glossy on the front, matte on the back, um, and just to see it in real life before I go and do my bulk order. Um, and they turned out amazing. I absolutely love them. So I'll show you guys that when I go into my office. I also am so glad that I did um, make that Vista print order because I misjudged the size of stickers. So I will get stickers made as well as a part of my packaging. I won't share that with you guys yet, but my packaging is so freaking cute so far. I cannot wait. Um, but yeah, I did get stickers made, but they were way too big. Like I maybe just measured it wrong, but imagine if I had that measurement in my head and then went and like ordered bulk 1000 stickers and I got that, I would have been like, fuck. Like they are okay. Like I can still use them, but they're just like this big. Whereas I wanted them like this big, but I just misjudged the size. I must've just done it wrong. Maybe I didn't like, thought it was millimeters or something. I don't know, but I fucked up. So I'm glad that I only got, yeah, like I think I got 25 stickers made. I can still use them, definitely. I might use them on the packaging or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I'm just glad that I did that. So yeah, I guess that's like a little tip before you go and um, spend heaps of money on buying in bulk. I would recommend like getting like, um, yeah, like, 25 or 50 of each, like if you want a business card or a thank you card, order from Vistaprint because they're really cheap and they also have like sales that run all the time. By the way, that wasn't sponsored from Vistaprint. Like they can gladly sponsor me. That would really, really help me out. But no, nah. um, I used to use Vistaprint for my business cards when I was doing freelancing and they were just really affordable and they seem to be all right. You can actually design your own business card or... Um, thank you cards like on the website like you don't need a template so i obviously use my template that m made for me um and then you can just upload the design and then you can even see what it's going to look like in like a 3d form it's pretty cool but if you don't have any sort of graphics or a design in mind you can literally just choose from all the fonts all the colors all the photos like my makeup artist business card was made on Vistaprint. Like there was little icons of um, lipstick and a brush and I just like clicked and dragged and then you can design everything from there. So it's great. 
Um, I also got little pens made with my Jazz Handmade logo on it as well. I also got a mouse pad. I'll show you guys that all later though. Um, but yeah, they're the main things that I just wanted to test the stickers and the thank you card. And yeah, thank God about the stickers. So now I know exactly what size I need when I go to bulk order. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my little bloody half an hour talk. I'm going to go and I really want to put makeup on. Like I haven't worn makeup in like a week. And I don't really want to film a makeup tutorial because I can't be bothered. But I just, I don't know, I just feel like putting something on. But I say that now and then I'll go to do it and be like, CBF, why am I putting on makeup? For what? <laughs> Anyways, I need to stop talking. So I will chat with you guys later. Good morning. Oh my God, I literally just woke up like five minutes ago. It is freezing. I'm not coping in this Perth winter, honestly. Like Gold Coast never gets down to this weather. Like it's like six degrees freezing um so i went and checked my po box yesterday i literally still have a morning face <laughs> i went and checked my po box yesterday and got a few things so i thought i would show you guys um so first package is from summer fridays i'm actually taking more note of um packaging now like just for inspo for my own packaging I think I already said this too, but I've completely changed my jewelry boxes. Like the color, the style, the shape. It, like literally it doesn't look anything like my samples. I've just done a full 180. But yeah, I am so happy with my jewelry box samples. So now I'm just in the process of um, designing the mailers. So yeah, super excited. So this is from Summer Fridays. Super Amino Gel Cleanser. I've actually heard Summer Fridays is a good brand, so I'll definitely have to try that. Then I got this gorgeous little package from a small business. So she does Zodiac prints. So I'm a Capricorn and she's framed this for me and it says, she's a Capricorn leader, disciplined, caring. The Capricorn woman lives for the hustle, striving day after day to get better and better. She's a perfectionist in disguise. That's true. <laughs> Um, always following the regulations and is a high achiever. That's actually true as well. I always like followed by the rules. Peter like always pays me out by doing it. Like I always have to do things by like law. <laughs> um, she takes control and offers a helping hand to those in need. She is an individual who shines with the with goddess powers adjacent to the sun, moon, and stars. An exotic creature with a warm-hearted nature. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. So her business is called Serenity Soul. I'll leave it linked down below as well as everything else that I mentioned anyways in the description. So thank you so much for that. And then Lux Sense sent me some more car scents, even though I don't have a car, but I'll definitely be putting them in my car when I do because last time I did receive some, it reminded me of that Louis Vuitton perfume, the pink one. So she said, thanks so much for featuring us in one of your vlogs. We really appreciate it as a small business trying to start up during these times. We wanted to gift you and Peter some more scents that you can hopefully enjoy. I'm actually going to put one in Peter's car. Oh, that's nice. I think that one's a guy's one. And then. Oh. <laughs> I actually can't open it in now. I have to like cut into that later, but I can't. Smells so freaking good. I'm gonna put this one in Peter's car um, and see what he says. I'm just gonna literally put it in. But thank you so much for sending those through. Um, and then Bondi Sands sent me a top up of my favorite tan. I personally use the um, Ultra Dark in the Aero, um, but this one's also just the normal Aero. So that's still dark if you layer it up, but I prefer the Ultra Dark. So freaking good. It's my favorite tan. And then finally, Etoile, who is a brand that I use in my makeup room. So my mirror and my table and organizers for my makeup are from this brand. I've gotten heaps of messages asking for a discount code, but I don't have one, but I might ask them, see if they can give me like a one-off code because I honestly get DMs like every day and heaps of people comment on my vlog, so I'll see if I can, but yeah, they're just amazing. So they do have like, these little travel makeup cases which is really handy for makeup artists especially or if you 
if you need one yourself. Um, so they said, hey Jazz, hope isolation is treating you well. We wanted to send you a little something to help you stay inspired. A beauty bag to keep you organized from all of our clients. Etoile Collective features goodies from our partner. So it's like their partner brands. That's so cool. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, I've actually been wanting to try this Banging Bod Firming Lotion. I've actually seen this all over Instagram. I really like their packaging. It's really cool. There's some MAC Mascara. That's so cool. Invisible Zinc Light SPF Tinted Moisturizer. I actually got sent this as well from Invisible Ink. Um, this is the Macy Cosmetics. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a brush. That would actually be really good for brushing out your cream contour. I love this highlighter from Benefit. It's called Cookie. It's so nice. It's actually really underrated. Like, I don't really feel like people talk about it. It's really, really freaking nice. This is the Eve's Beauty Sponge. Then we've got the Al Alia Skin Pink Perfect Australian Pink Clay Mask. I've seen that brand on Instagram as well. I actually needed some more facial wipes. So these are the water wipes by the brand Water Wipes, I guess. I've actually never seen this before. What the hell? Keen to try them. I love the Benefit Brow Setters. This is the clear one. It's really good. This one is a Power Lips Fluid. What brand is that? New Color. And then finally, a Acetology Overnight Lip Mask. I love lip masks, lip balms, everything lips. Thank you so much, Etoile and all those brands that um, contributed to this little package. It's awesome. So yeah, that's just what I got yesterday. Um, I was gonna say something else, but I've forgotten now. I feel like, because I filmed so much content this week, it's gonna be so long this vlog so sorry in advance but also like not sorry because you guys love when i upload my movie vlogs anyway so i guess it's gonna keep some of you entertained well hopefully even though i feel like my life is like so boring because i'm like just at home but i guess it's like interesting to watch someone's life that you don't personally know like i've never really personally gotten into vlogs Maybe I should start watching like people's vlogs. If you guys follow any other YouTubers that do vlogs, like weekly vlogs, let me know. That's like interesting. <laughs> Not saying mine are interesting, but yeah, just like random vlogs that you like watching. Let me know in the comments because yeah, I'm getting bored, bored in the house. I'm thinking of just doing a Pilates session today just from the Breathe at Home Pilates group. And then I think later on when it gets a bit warm, I'm gonna go for a big walk. I might even just walk to those shops again because it took me an hour in total. That was a good walk. So yeah, that's my plans for today. I'm gonna go and have a coffee. I need to put away some washing. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to really update you guys on. Okay guys, so I actually put on something other than trackies and a jumper we're actually going to came up because i want to start getting some supplies for the business so i just wanted to get like a cheap sort of scale just so i can roughly know how much each parcel weighs because you do have to like take that into consideration when you're buying um like postage slips like to post your stuff um, so you have to put in like an accurate weight so i think i might just get like a cheap set of scales um obviously like after I've done it for a while, I won't need to do it, but it's just like at the start, it's good to know how much like a box or two boxes um, weigh. After a while, um, I'll just get the hang of it and just know how much like two boxes in a package will weigh. But just to start off with, I'm just gonna get like a cheap one. Um, I would use my kitchen scales, but that's like kind of gross. Like I've seen people using just like kitchen or bathroom scales, but I feel like I need something separate and they're not even that expensive anyways from Kmart. So um, that also I need to go, well, I'm not going to go today, but in regards to like my packing station, I'm obviously going to need a higher table. So I was just thinking of going to Ikea and buying a tabletop and then just buying drawers and then just having that 
on the two drawers on either side. It's actually what I did with my desk living in Queensland. Even though you didn't really see it, it was in the spare room, but it was actually from my mum's house in my makeup room. All I did was I just bought a tabletop from Ikea and then just two Alex drawers and literally just put the top over the top of the two drawers on either side. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna do that. I also need to get a few things from Officeworks, but they're not really like essential right now. I don't really need like the storage where I'm gonna keep my jewelry yet because I don't have it. Um, what else do I need to get? We just need to get a few things from the shops just while we're there. And yeah, it feels really nice to get dressed up in something other than a tracksuit set and leave the house. I changed the bedding in the spare room. I'll show you guys what it looks like. I need to also recycle that. So much better. So that's what the bedding looks like. I've just opened the window just to air it out because the Kmart rug stinks a bit. Like it's just got that like musky smell to it. So that's like the texture of it. It's really, really nice. And I think it goes really well with the marble theme. I just think that just clashed a little bit. That's all. Um, and I think it looks a little bit better with the rug. So yeah, that's all ready for when mum comes in June. Also, what I want to do is take some photos for my Depop. I still have so much clothes that I want to get rid of and sell. Um, like some of my old favorites, like even stuff that I haven't even like worn. I just don't really wear it. Like where are these from? I don't even know. Oh, Polly. Had that for ages. So, yeah, I might... Oh, I was actually trying to find that the other day. Um, yeah, I might just put up all of my, like, really old stuff. Like, I didn't want to let go of it because... I don't know. Sometimes when you've had clothes for a few years, they've, like... You know, just been with you for a while like this. I would never sell because it's got memories. I bought it in Canada and I'm just obsessed with them. I'm actually going to take them out and wear them. Like, this dress... I think, oh, no, I'm going to keep that one. That's been with me since I was, like, in high school. I love that dress. It's kind of like a one-size-fits-all dress. Like, even when I was a size 14, I could fit into it because it's real stretchy. I think this is my kukai. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to sell this. It's way too big for me now, my kukai jumpsuit. I think it's the oyster jumpsuit. Maybe not. Maybe I'm confusing that with the oyster pants. It's size 40, which is a bit too big for me now, but, like... I just remember I felt so good in it when I bought it and then this as well was like my goal skirt Oh my god, I should try it on I'll try it on when I get home because I bought this um, I actually bought this when I like just before I went to America remember when I like shredded down to I think I was like 60 kilos I'm 64 now, but I feel like I looked skinnier back then and this just fit me and I was planning on wearing it. This is the size, 36. So what's that, like an 8? Kukai sizing's quite small in their bottoms. But I planned on wearing it for New Year's Eve in New York. But your girl's got to eat. And she ate a lot and I didn't even fit into it. Because it was like at the end of my trip. So I'm going to try this on when I get home. I'm really excited slash scared. Because yeah, like honestly I tried it on like maybe three months ago and it just wouldn't go up. There was just no, I should have taken a photo. Like it wouldn't even, like this wouldn't even go up. It was way too small. But this would be so cute with some stockings and a turtleneck and a jumper for winter. Oh my gosh. Skirts in winter are a vibe, okay. I've got so much shit in here. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely declutter all that. So I'll have it up on my Depop soon. How cute is this little? side table i love that um okay yeah we gotta go and i'll chat with you guys later okay so we're back from kmart i thought i'd show you guys what i got so i'm going to attempt to make some t-shirts with my own like labels or, or designs so i've seen heaps of tiktoks and stuff of people doing it so i decided to buy that and i'm getting a printer as well like for the business anyways just got some more matching marble I didn't actually realize I had big plates because we've got the little ones. So I thought we may as well match and they were only like a dollar fifty each. I got this one from Woolworths because I want to make the keto bread mix that I have from More Life. And then I got this cutting mat if I was to make my own stickers or something like that. And I guess it would help when I am like cutting around the logos that I want to print on the t-shirt. So I just got that. 
And then I got another pair of these. These are literally the comfiest trackies. I get size medium and it fits like a little bit oversized, which I like. 15 bucks in the men's section. I've got the blue ones, absolutely love it. Got some avocados and then I found this. I reckon it would look really cool like on display with my jewelry and even for product shots. I think that was like $12 as well. And then I just got a scale for weighing my packages. My packages are gonna be quite small so that's why I just decided to get like a kitchen scale rather than like one of the big ones for like actual packages. So hopefully that'll be all right. And then we just got a bunch of food, but that's boring. I went to Aldi and I got some more of this because I love it. The coconut yogurt, so yum. Got some more almond milk and then mainly Peter's stuff. Hey guys, so I'm back home from Office Works. By the way, before you guys ask, this is from Grey Lines. I got it literally years ago. Um, so, I'll show you guys what I got from Officeworks. I got a cute calculator just because it's annoying using my phone. But I don't think I showed you guys me trialing out my new barcode machine. So, I ended up buying a machine for the labels. I actually just posted on my Instagram. Hold on one sec. Let me just close the door because Peter's playing his dumb game. I actually just sold a bunch of my foundations to one of my friends uh, on the Gold Coast. I'm gonna test out what well, I actually already have with some of my Depop orders. I've been using my barcode machine. So basically anyone can really set up a Sendle account. I guess, I think you do have to like put in your business name or whatever, but like you can just register and Start by sending stuff through Sendle, which is like Oz Post, and you can print out your um, shipping labels and pay for them online. And then you print them out on your um, parcel, and then you can either go and drop it off, which we did. Um, I just wanted to see like where the drop off point was near my house, which was kind of close, which is good. Or you can arrange for them to pick it up for free. So I'm gonna trial out the pickup, even though I only have one. It doesn't say like there's a minimum amount of parcels for a career pickup. So I'm just gonna try it with this one. After a lot of frustration the other day, I didn't even vlog it because I was that mad. I couldn't get it working, um, but I did figure out how to use it. So I ended up getting the Zebra GK420D. I was gonna buy it brand new, but I saw them on eBay for like half price and they were used, but like, for a first barcode machine, I didn't really want to spend $800. So I think I got that one for like $220. Um, but yeah, like it looks fine. It works fine. Um, it was just the setting up that was a little bit annoying. But so basically you have to buy your stickers, which I bought offline. I think I just Googled it to be honest. And I just bought that in bulk. So let me just pull this over here. On Sendle, I hope this is interesting for you guys, but I'm just gonna share it anyways because I got really excited when I got it working. So basically on Sendle, you put in um, like their address, their the dimensions of the package. You also have to weigh your package, which I did with the scales and it worked really well. So this package was um, 1.25 kilos and it was in like the shoe box bracket, which is 3.3 kilos to 12 liters, which is just like a bracket. So the cheapest one is a satchel and that's 500 grams or under. So I'm gonna literally show you guys how to do it. So freaking easy, but I'll obviously do like a detailed video in better lighting when I can actually have a space to set up, but I don't have my desk yet, which I'm gonna get when mom comes to Perth, so I need to plug it in. Obviously, um, I'll when I launch my website, it'll be with Shopify. So it's actually you can actually link Sendle to Shopify as well as eParcel, like depending on what um, career service you want to go with. And um, apparently, if someone makes an order through your Shopify, you can sync it to Sendle, and all of their information will come up in Sendle. So you don't have to like manually put in their address, but you can create like a new order like without having a website or anything like that. So 
that's what I've been doing with my Depop parcels. I've sold two with the labeling machine now, and I'll continue to use it because one is actually cheaper. Um, I think you do actually have to have a registered business name now that I'm thinking of it. When I did register, I don't think anyone can. Um, so yeah, you do have to have like a registered business name um, to have Sendle, and I think you may have to be accepted. Anyways, it was super easy. I pretty much got accepted straight away. Anyways, that's besides the point. Okay, so I'm going to put in the weight, 1.25 length. So I've got my little thing here. So 23 by 26. That's about four centimeters in height. So it's a shoe box. All right, so it's going to this address. Let me just triple check that going to the Gold Coast. Okay, so I have arranged for a pickup on Monday 11th of May. Let's see how that goes. Is it gonna be awkward? Like, is he just gonna knock and be like, can I have the parcel? Um, so obviously you put your bank details and stuff in and then like once you've put your details in once, you don't have to put it in all the time. Okay, so once that's done, you can download your label. Obviously you don't need a barcode machine. It's just a little bit easier. But if you have a printer, which I don't, which I actually didn't end up buying today, I was gonna actually buy a printer. I just thought I probably won't use it. I'm gonna change. So when you're printing it, you have to change it to the dimensions of the sticker, which is four by six. So that's the size of the stickers that are in there. Um, so this is what it looks like. You just go literally file, print, change it. And that is literally it. And then you just print it. What? Okay. Let me just cover her address. So that's what the packing slip looks like. And then you literally slap it on the front and that is it. And then I just have to give it to the courier on Monday. Do I have to sign that? Nope. Perfect. But yeah, that is literally it. I ordered some compostable mailer bags for my Depop orders, just so I have some to post with. So I've just been posting with like the normal ones that I bought from OzPost just to save some money. Um, and then I'm just gonna use my Sendle account to send the items. So yeah, I'll see how the whole pickup service goes. But yeah, it's really freaking easy. I thought that side of things was going to be a bit more complicated than what it actually is. I will show you guys what I got from Officeworks as well. Let me just put this So I ended up getting these five shelf organizers from Officeworks. They were $17 and I'm going to use these to um, have my jewelry like stored. So I'll have this on my desk and I'll obviously label it like I've already started flower studs, butterfly studs. I probably will use my Dynamo, is it Dynamo? Dynamo like little labeler just so it's a little bit neater because my handwriting isn't the best. But I just use the little tabs that it came with just to play around and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I got two of these. So I'll have them on the desk like that. I just think it's an easy way to kind of just see everything because it's like clear. So I've got two of them to start off with. And then I got, I just needed a, what are these called? Blade to open boxes. <laughs> um, and then I just got a Artline Supreme permanent marker for when I'm writing on the thank you cards. So I'd like to write a little note. Got this really cute calculator. And then I swear I got something else. Am I tripping balls? I got these three pens, four pens. These are the Sharpies in silver, gold, and bronze. I just thought they would be cute as well to um, write on the thank you cards or even, I don't know, drawing love hearts or something somewhere. I don't know, they were really cool. And then I just got like a calligraphy pen, which is cool and it makes your writing look so nice, even if you have shit writing. Like I was using the demo pads at um, Officeworks using this and I was like, what the hell? This is making my writing look so cool because it's like, angled and really thin and you can make some letters 
sort of look like um, sort of like my logo font. You know how it's like thick and then thin. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. It was like six dollars. So yeah, a couple new additions. Have I spoke about the table that I'm getting? I think I did, yeah. I'm gonna get the top from Ikea and then the two drawers either side so I can um, store my jewelry boxes. Oh my God, you guys are going to die when you see them. I'm literally that happy with them. It makes this look like shit. It's just 10 times better, more luxe. I feel like this is me still, but as I said, I didn't realize you could get gold foiling because I was just so new to finding manufacturers that did jewelry boxes. So that was kind of like the first, not the first person I found, but like one of the first people that I found and all of their um, like designs on their page had this sort of writing or like this sort of style. So that's just what I went for because I thought that's like what they did, but they didn't really mention that they did other styles, which they kind of should have. But yeah, then I saw like other manufacturers with different styles and I was like, okay, well I can basically customize anything I want. Like why am I going by what's on their website? So then I decided to go on Pinterest and have a look and see like what other brands have done in the past or even like designer brands and like what they do. And I kind of got ideas and inspo from that. So yeah, thank God for that. Um, like I still like this box, but it's just funny like me back like what two three weeks ago i was like obsessed with that packaging and now i'm just like so off it i hate it <laughs> but you guys will love the new packaging like i feel like i want to keep it a surprise but then i probably will get it in the mail and want to show you guys because i'd be so excited um did i show you guys the thank you cards don't think i did anyways these are my thank you cards in the flesh so freaking cute it did cost a little bit more than buying it in like a thousand piece bulk. Um, I think I only got the 50 pack, but it was still like quite reasonably priced. Like it wasn't like expensive. Um, but yeah, obviously the more you bulk order, the less it's gonna cost per item, but obviously you are paying more. So um, I got that, I got these pens made as well. I got my mug made, like that black and white mug. Um, oh, I got these stickers made as well, but holy shit, I underestimated the size of them. I don't know why I thought these were smaller than they were, but they're massive. They're, I think, 7.8 millimeters wide, so they are way, 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 way too big. Um, and plus, I'm thinking of doing um, a different design, maybe like gold foiling or something like that. But yeah, I thought I would end this vlog here, even though it is Saturday night. Tomorrow is Mother's Day, so we're going to go over to Peter's mum's or parents' house and give her... Um, her flowers. I also did get her a present, but it's still in the mail, but we got her a present. So yeah, I also got a pair as well. So I'll show you guys that when it comes. I don't want to actually spoil it in case she's watching this before she gets it, which I know she probably will. Um, so yeah, I won't spoil that, but I'll obviously show you guys when I get it. It's really cute. But yeah, I thought I would end this vlog here so I can start editing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this wasn't boring because I feel like all I did this whole vlog was just like sit down and talk shit for like 20 minutes at a time. But yeah, that's just what my life is right now. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Don't forget to thumbs up if you want to see more vlogs, if you want me to keep vlogging because it helps me out a lot. Well, it doesn't help me out, but like it just reassures me that you guys like watching my shit. Um, and leave a comment down below and I'll make sure I get back to as many of you as I can and also make sure you send me more questions for my influencer chat next week too. So I'll leave that in a pinned comment down below and I will see you next week. Bye.